Hi guys, welcome to my channel Lush Gardener. I hope you guys are fine and are safe. So guys, this is an update video on the stem cuttings that I've kept to callus. I have made a video on it. If you have not watched that video, I'll put the link in the description below. You can check it out. Now guys, the cuttings were done on the 7th of October and this particular clip was shot on the 9th of October, which is two days after the stem cutting. So even after two days, they are not completely done. They yet have to get calloused further. It's almost 50% done. But still this is a very crucial period you cannot still let them come in contact with water and moisture you have to wait for them to completely get calloused so on the 11th of october they were completely calloused the wounds were completely dry and thickened so now i had to put them out in indirect bright light because they started to stretch as you can see over here if you take a closer look at the crown area you can see that they are slightly getting faded off now this is an early stage of stretching so if you tend to notice that your crown area is starting to turn slightly whiter or if it's getting faded it indicates that it's lacking sunlight so i didn't want to keep them indoor anymore so i put them out in indirect bright light but I still need to wait for some more time because even though they have callus, but they do not have aerial roots yet. Because as I said, I always wait for them to have the aerial roots and then I tend to put them into the soil. So I'll have to probably wait for some more time. So finally, after waiting for a really long time, the last time that I shot the clip was on the 11th of October. So today is the 20th of October and I've seen that almost 99% of them have aerial rooted. So now it's time to to put them out in the soil so i'm going to show you how they tend to look so all of these lot have started to aerial root to be honest i've never done a mass stem cutting like this this is the first time ever there are around 22 of a stem cuttings that i have over here now if you are a beginner please be well prepared if you want to do a mass stem cutting like this because you have to have enough soil enough pots ready i did not have enough of my concrete pots i ran short of my concrete pots so i had some of my plastic pots which i will be using for repotting these so these are the aerial roots because they were outside the soil that is the reason why they tend to appear dark pink in color which indicates that they are very healthy and you can also see the cut part it has hardened it has thickened and dried which means that the callus process was also very successful you can see all of these cuttings have aerial roots and you can see the wound and the cut is also dried up so this is how your callus should look like it should not be discolored it should not look darker in color the stem should be very firm should be very stiff if you tend to notice that the part where it's supposed to get calloused if it's turning darker in color or if it's turned black or if you tend to feel that the stem is turning soft or yellow then you'll have to immediately cut it off that's the reason why i said whenever you're doing a stem cutting ensure that you have a good enough long piece of stem so that in case if there is any mishap you can immediately cut it off so always ensure that the callus part should be whitish in color it should not be discolored it should not be soft it should not turn darker in color otherwise that indicates that there is a small rot that is starting to happen now there could be various reasons behind that probably the cutting material that you use the scissor blade or knife was not sterilized or probably there was some water that came in contact with the cut part even before it could have calloused so there could be probably some reasons or probably the succulent itself was not not quite healthy when you tend to do a stem cutting so ensure that your succulent is well hydrated is healthy before you tend to conduct your stem cutting so guys these are all of my cuttings that has been successfully passed through the callus stage so as i said now they even have aerial roots so it's time to pot them so as i said it's very important to be well prepared if you have enough pots only then tend to do a stem cutting now i did not have any more concrete pots left because it usually takes takes almost a week for them to get prepared but luckily I had enough of plastic pots now I have around 22 of the stem cuttings which will be more than enough to be put individually in each of these pots now over here what I'm going to be doing is I'm using these uh, green shade cloths that I have over here which was just otherwise going in waste so I'm going to use this as a net at the base of the pot 
this will refrain from any of the soil flowing out of the pot when you tend to water because uh, these drain holes are quite large in the pot and if you're going to just leave them as it is and you're going to put soil directly into the pot then whenever you're going to water all of the sandy soil is going to flow out and you might not be left with any soil in the pot so it's very important that you either use a net or you can use even small pebbles or stones or if you even have broken pots you can break them slightly more smaller and add them at the base of the pot but guys please remember please do not use any material that tends to retain moisture please do not use coconut husk or cocoa peat to cover the base because it tends to retain moisture you want to use a material that doesn't retain moisture so please refrain from using cocoa coir cocoa peat cocoa husk or even for that matter wooden chips or wood pieces anything that tends to retain moisture you can use these nets you can use these green shade nets you can also use pebbles if you have broken pots you can even break them slightly smaller and add them these are uh, some of the pebbles that i've used in this pot you can use them like that what this tends to do is it will help in drainage and also it will not let the sand and the soil flow out of your pot whenever you tend to do watering for your succulents so now that we are ready now again over here i have used my own diy soil mix which is 80 percent of aquarium sand and 20 percent of garden soil now this is my old soil this is my older aquarium sand which is slightly smaller than the uh, regular one that i have been using you have seen my regular soil mix had a slightly bigger pieces of sand granules but this is my older aquarium sand it works the same the only thing is that it was slightly smaller in granule as compared to the recent one so over here i will quickly start putting in my succulents now it's very easy to put cuttings into the soil because the stem is very stiff and hard so it immediately tends to get into the soil you do not need to put in a lot of pressure like usually when we tend to do a repotting we have the succulents with roots and at times it becomes little difficult to push in the roots but whenever we tend to do these stem cuttings i find them much easier to repot compared to the ones that have larger roots so while I'm potting these, I will also talk a little bit in detail about air rooting because a lot of people had questions related with this because a lot of people say that their succulents do not air root even after a couple of weeks, even after a month or so, they still do not show any signs of rooting because I had recently got a comment uh, asking whether does humidity play a role in creating the aerial roots. I would say yes, to some extent it does play an important role. But guys, we also need to understand when is this humidity available because that is something that is very important as we all know that succulents do not like a lot of humidity. Now, luckily, I belong to a city which is quite elevated above the sea level. It's basically at a slightly higher altitude due to which majority of my succulents really love this climate. Apart from that, my city has a very pleasant climate throughout the year. It's very cool and it doesn't get quite warm. But during the summer, it does get slightly warm but not to an extent wherein my succulents are struggling so let me quickly tell you a little bit about my environment so basically as my city is above the sea level it tends to stay quite dry during the day so if i have to tell you the humidity levels are between 55 to 58 percent during the daytime and at the night it tends to shoot up to 90 percent now the best thing about this is it works in the favor of my succulents because succulents also have a similar natural habitat wherein their days are warmer and dry and in the night it's cooler and slightly humid. Now basically the succulents tend to do their photosynthesis during the night time and they prefer cooler and humid temperature. So probably that is one of the reason why I'm able to successfully air root my succulents within a very short period of time as compared to others. Now I know this completely depends upon the climate and the environment that's the reason why a lot of people it takes a lot of time for the air roots to appear on their succulents air rooting tends to take a lot of time so unfortunately we cannot do much about it it completely depends upon the environment and climate. So if I have to summarize, basically, if you're going to have a slightly higher humidity during the nighttime, as I said, my city, 
the humidity levels are almost 90% at night it's very cool so this tends to work out really well for my succulents even when i tend to do stem cuttings after they have calloused it doesn't take a lot of time for them to put out aerial roots probably because they have a very similar uh, environment or the climate is very similar to their natural habitat hence i do not have much efforts when it comes to growing succulents so I'm pretty much done with my potting. Now the aftercare remains the same what we tend to follow for our newly arrived succulents. Now they are going to be in indirect bright light for at least a week till they start getting acclimated to the soil. The watering will be done after four to five days and now I will not be putting them out in direct morning sunlight yet. I have to acclimate them. As you can see majority of them have lost the color. The colors have faded off because they were not receiving a lot of light. You seen initially they looked very brightly colored because they were in direct morning sunlight for five to six hours. But ever since they were moved indoor to callus and then they were put out an in indirect bright light which was not very bright because it's monsoons right now so the light is not very bright due to which you can see most of the colors have faded off. But again you cannot put them into direct sunlight right away they will get burnt we have to wait it will take another week or so and then I will slowly start introducing them to morning direct sunlight and then the colors will start coming back. So I also had a question related to is it okay to keep your succulent out of the soil if it already has aerial roots will it survive now guys over here I'll give you a quick example this is one of my moonstone that has calloused and I have put it for it to aerial root you can see right now the succulent looks quite healthy the leaves are looking very plump so I'm going to put it over here and I'm going to show you what's going to happen next the lower leaves are slightly wrinkled because it was waiting for it to callous even though the succulent was well hydrated but over the time when it was getting calloused it started consuming all the water from the lower leaves that's the reason why you can see the lower leaves are slightly wrinkled but after almost a week or so I noticed that more of the leaves started to run out of water but luckily the best thing what I noticed is it had aerial roots now guys this is the reason why once you tend to see that the aerial roots are present you need to put them into the soil as soon as possible do not wait any longer because even even though there are aerial roots they will absorb moisture from the air but that is not going to be enough for the succulent to sustain so it's very important after you tend to see that the aerial roots are present it's very important you have to report them so i hope that this video was helpful to you if it was please hit the like button if you're new to my channel please consider subscribing to it until then take care stay safe and keep propagating